Sense version 25.5 update of Premiere Pro, there are now super easy built-in effects in Premiere that will allow you to animate your photos to create those Ken Burn documentary effects without any keyframing. Let's jump on in. If you missed my update video on what's new in Premiere Pro in version 25.5, I highly recommend watching that video so you have an idea of what effects and transitions are available and where you can find them inside of Premiere Pro. All right, so what is the Ken Burns effect? Well, it's called Ken Burns because it's named after a documentarian named Ken Burns, who was known in his documentary films of creating this pan and zoom effect on still photos. So essentially Ken Burns effect just means adding some rotation, position, and scale changes on still photos to add that extra movement. Okay, so in my timeline, I have two photos here and I wanna add movement. Now, if you wanna add smooth movement, I recommend making your photos at least five seconds in duration. And unlike video, photos you can extend however long you want because it's not restricted by what was recorded in that video clip. So I would just say go to the center of your first photo and press C to make a cut. And the reason why we're making a cut is we're going to drag one of the new transitions that's built inside of Premiere Pro called Motion Tween. And we're doing this instead of keyframing, so it's gonna save you time. So we can go and search for Motion Tween and you'll find it underneath the smart tools here. And I've talked about this before when Film Impact was a plugin, but now it's a part of Adobe, which is awesome. So we're just going to drag it in the middle point at this cut point. So now it looks like this. Nothing happened. Gal, what's going on? Well, that's because you need to create some sort of change in the scale, position, and rotation of either the second or the first clip. So you need to select this first one here and go to effect controls. And then you can scale this up. You can add a little bit of position change like so. And maybe we want some slight rotation. So that means we got to scale it up a little bit more and bring it down. So now if we press play, look at what happens. So first off, we have an issue here. You can see that there is some borders happening here, which we don't want. So we need to select this and then go down to render options and change it to composite and that will fix it. Now, I recommend saving the composite motion tween as your own preset, so you can control click on the name here and save preset and maybe call it motion tween composite. So that way, every time you use it, you don't have to go down here and change it to composite, right? So now it looks cool, but I think it's a little bit too fast. So we can drag the end of it and drag it out as long as we need to. And if you want it to be perfectly um, at the end here, you can't drag it out even more, but what you can do is go up here to effect controls and just drag this ending so that way it meets the end of this cut point. So now we have this nice slower zoom out with a little bit of rotation. That's the key to a good Ken Burns effect is that it's nice and slow to let the viewer focus on what's happening in the image. So let's go ahead and do it one more time on this photo here. Let's go ahead and make another cut point, press C, cut. All right, so for this one, let's start zoomed out and then zoom in. So on this second clip here, let's go ahead and zoom in and adjust the position how we want, like so. And then we can go to effects, and this time I'm going to choose my uh, preset that I made, which has the composite already done, and drag it at this cut point. And now I can extend the motion tween out, and once again, I'll select the transition, go to effect controls, and drag out this ending so it meets perfectly here. So now we have two slowly animating photos and it really just takes a few seconds to do. But the only thing that's really bothering me here is I don't like that the animation ends here and then this one starts still and the movement doesn't really start until about almost a second in. And I think I wanna create some sort of animation transition between the two photos. So in order to make it so it goes from in motion to in motion here, so there's no kind of static lull in between, what we can do is we can select all of the clips 
and control click and select nest. And we can just call this photo sequence. It can be any name that you want. So essentially it just makes a sequence within a sequence. If I double click to open this up, it has the two photos that we just animated. So now here with this nest, I can go to a point where there's still movement in the photo. So right around here and I can press C and make a cut. And then I can go to the next photo where the movement already starts and press C and click to make a cut. And then I can delete that part in between. If you press option delete, it will ripple delete them together. So now what I can do is I can add a cool little transition at this cut point using one of the new built-in effects. Go up to effects and let's try the blur dissolve. Here it is down here under essentials and let's drag and drop it. And then we can make it longer or shorter just by dragging those handles. Let's see how it looks. There we go. So you can see that, you know, this blur dissolve is happening while the movement happens. Now, the only thing that's kind of throwing me off here, and this is something to keep in mind, is the rhythm, right? And obviously you might be editing to some music, but this photo is animating quite a bit faster because there's more scale in. So what I recommend doing is going back to our nest sequence, which is already open here, and we can extend this out and make it slower. We can go up to effect controls and drag this to make it a slower animation. It's about playing with editing, right? So let's see how this looks. And now it's a bit slower, right? And that looks better. And you can maybe make this blur dissolve a little bit slower. Now that's nice. And if you think that this transition is too simple, you can simply select it and we can go to effects and let's try the wave transition, which is here underneath transformers. And we can just drag it onto our existing transition and it will keep the same duration. And so now we got a wave transition, which looks really nice. You can always go to wave impacts, effect controls, and play around with these parameters, the angle, the amplitude, the length, until you get a wave transition that you like. Also with motion tween, there's other things that you can do. So if we go back to our original photo sequence, if you select motion tween, you can also add a little bit of dolly, which creates this kind of fake forward movement. So if we make that two, we can get a little bit of more dolly movement happening which looks really nice. There's also two other effects called the grow effect and the shrink effect that allows you to create a simple zoom in and zoom out on individual photos or video clips. So I have a photo here, and if I wanna just create a simple zoom in, I can go to effects and search for grow effects, which is located under video effects, not transitions. And this I actually drag on the video clip itself, the whole one, not at a cut point. It just creates a simple zoom in. And you can always go to effect controls and make adjustments here. For example, you can adjust how much it grows. So if you want it to be more, you can do 15%. And now you can see it zooms in farther. Now you may need to adjust the anchor point and you can do that just by adjusting where you want it to end up by using these parameters here. So we want to lower that so we can zoom in on the keyboard instead. So look at that. It's just a slow zoom in, but it's quite linear. What you can do is you can ease in and you can also ease out to create a curve. So now it's a bit smoother of a zoom in, right? So that's the grow. What about the shrink? So let's go ahead and delete the grow and now let's go to shrink. Again, these are all built in. This is like one of the best updates that Premiere's done in a long time. So now it's shrinking. And just like before, we can add some ease in, ease out. We can say we want it to shrink by 10%, so it starts zoomed in and zooms out, and we can adjust the anchor point. And look at that. In seconds, we were able to create this without any keyframing. Not only are the designs sleek, but they're fast and easy to use. And Motion Array reached out and they're the sponsor of today's video. If you use my link down below in the description box to sign up for an annual plan, you'll get two extra months free. 
You can see here I just typed in slideshow and there are thousands of results for templates for all of your favorite softwares from After Effects to Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. You can get old photo slides like this that kind of work like a carousel, which is really cool. And there's also like more modern styles that kind of have this nice slideshow effect and then they pop up. And there's some cool documentary slideshows that have some old particle effects on top that you can use with some cool burn transitions that are used. In this case, I like this modular multi-screen, which is a bit more modern. And what's great, it's for Premiere Pro as well. So let's go ahead and download this. So let's go ahead and open up the modular screens template. So from the template here, I'm going to edit the modular multi-screen 004. So I can double click on this one just to see this in action. But the way to edit is by using the image placeholders and the text placeholders, which is located in the edit folder. So I'm going to open up the folder for 04, and then I need to open up each placeholder here and drag in my own image, and then reframe it using effect controls. And then I'll repeat for each placeholder. And now all of my photos are inside of these placeholders. I didn't have to do any animation. And now I can update the text placeholders as well, just by going to the edit folder and then opening up the text for 04, and then opening up the text placeholders and updating the text. And now we have our own modular slideshow and it took just a minute to do. So give Motion Array a go, and they have much more. They have stock video, they have music, sound effects, and plugins that you can install to create even more cool effects. And you can use my link below to get two extra months free. And thanks again to Motion Array for sponsoring this video. So now you know how to create Ken Burns effects inside of Premiere Pro. Give it a go on your next edit and let me know how it goes. And if you have any questions, just drop a comment below. And if you want to learn more Premiere Pro effects, you can just click right over here to watch the next video. That's all for this video. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.